Welcome back, everybody, to Haven of Horror. I've got the great to do little with me again, uh, picking back up where we where we left off. This time for the month of February, we're doing horror films with a romantic twist to them, whether that be a positive romance or, in the case of tonight's film, uh, a negative romance. I'd say. Uh, welcome yeah. back, Doolittle. Hi there. How have you been recently? Good, good. Just kind of been taking it easy. How about you? I've been doing all right. Just getting back in the swing of things at school, you know, but uh, um, all things are good. Hell yeah. So you picked tonight's movie, which is the 1999 Japanese horror film audition. Um, yes. I, I have to be honest, I'd never heard of this. Um, so I have to I, I have to ask, how did you discover this film? I discovered this film back in middle school or high school. I had seen this film on the list of like, oh, like disturbing, uh, like movies or disturbing or like, you know, like or best horror movies or like most disturbing horror movies or just like most disturbing movies in general, like those kinds of like lists or whatever. Um. So it already, like, I was like, okay, that's interesting that this is a movie that's, like, has this kind of attention. Um, and I also know about Takeshi Miike. Um, he's a kind of a noted director from Japan who made, has made, like, a lot of movies. Um, you know, not and not just, like, horror movies, but, like, kind of wide range of uh, films. I think he did the um, Phoenix Wright movie. I think, um, like in Japan, uh, which is <laughs> very different from this. Um, I think he did that. I could be wrong. Um, but, uh, but, you know, he also did Ichi the Killer. So I'm familiar with him, like his presence, uh, in kind of Japanese film canon, um, or like cult filmmaker kind of canon over there. Um, so eventually I just thought it was on Shutter and I was like, yeah, I'm going to give it a watch. And this is probably the most disturbing uh, horror movie I think I've ever seen, I think. Uh, that's like I, I like and I legitimately really appreciate um, and respect. Uh, it's one of my favorites, you know, um, because it disturbs me, but it's so like, but it's actually like really good in what it does. Yeah. Yeah, and interesting enough, looking at his filmography, um, he has a cameo in Hostel, uh, mm. which is obviously famously inspired by this film. But a lot of yeah. his stuff that I'm seeing here that's just jumping out of me is like anime ad adaptations. Yes, uh, I think he did like a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure movie, <laughs> uh, which I did not know about. I've never seen that uh, that anime. Uh, but I guess he did that. But he's made a lot of movies, like a lot of movies. Yeah, I've seen that here. Yeah, uh, he also did, like you said, the Ace Attorney. Um, yeah, he's also in uh, No More Heroes too. Well, that that makes sense, because you know he's a cult kind of filmmaker personality. You know, makes sense. Yeah. So I watched this completely blind. Yeah. And I thought it was interesting. The setup is this guy wants to get married, so he holds auditions for his wife. Yeah. And I was like, okay, instantly we're doing something with how people, men specifically, can view marriage as you have to find the right woman down to, like, scientific way. Um, and then, obviously, you know, it's going to come back to bite him. Uh, I did not. I did not expect what actually happens. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> we because uh, kind of the most like famous thing about this movie is the fact that it starts out so lighthearted, and as it goes on, it just kind of becomes a spiral into violence and um, you know, specifically like something much much more like like sinister and darker, you know, and. I think that I, I, I that's something I really like about this movie is just the structure of it is really powerful. 
Um, I would say that the audition yeah. scene is a straight up like comedy scene. Yes, uh, and there there's that scene, and like there's also other moments between the father and and his son, um, where like it's very comedic, you know, like it's definitely like very um like it's it's very deceiving it 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 deceives you and it lulls you into a false sense of security it, absolutely yeah cuz as soon as as soon as we got to the phone scene where you find out she's been waiting for him to call and then she plays it off like oh it's going to be an obsessive lover and she's going to take it too far and if there's one thing I do really want to give this movie is it kept me guessing until the very end. Yeah. I I tried to read this movie three different ways and it would just go the opposite way of where I thought it was going. Yeah, the ending of the movie is a very um, sudden kind of like moment of clarity, um, I think, for the whole picture. Um, yeah, I, I think also something really impressive is that even with that scene where she where he has the phone call with her um, and you see like the, like the body bag or whatever, uh, or like the, the guy in the sack uh, in her uh, room. Um, like a, after that moment, like it still continues on and you forget that happened, which is interesting. Did, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I am not the kind of person that gets turned off by like gore and stuff. I love, you know, gory films. Mm hmm. The one thing in this that did make me like, I don't know if I want to watch this, is the the eating scene. Oh yeah, with, with the the vomit. That's just I didn't know what it was in the context of the movie until I looked it up to make sure that I understood the movie correctly, and I was just like, okay, that may be a step too far for me personally. Uh, is there anything in this movie that you think is too much for you? Uh no, okay. no, I I don't think so because. Well, it definitely, I mean, okay, I say that, definitely very disturbing, and, like, it definitely made me very uncomfortable, but, like, I, I felt like it was within, like, reason, you know, for, like, and, and also, we put, like, limitations on ourselves for, like, the art we, you know, watch and all that, you know? Oh, absolutely. So, what, what might be, you know, th there are some movies and some stuff out there that, like, I... I probably will, will never like go back to or watch again or you know just because like uh, I feel like that's a little too exploitive with this I don't think it's exploitive because I think it's making a point about what it's doing because you know in that scene there's something kind of artful about the the approach to it where you kind of see how she is uh, her kind of cycle of violence as a child and a victim of child abuse has kind of spiraled into her kind of demeaning uh, people in her life as a violent adult now. I, I think that the movie's doing something with that. Yeah, where this differs yeah. from something like Hostel or, or Saw, which, you know, really revel in the violence, this is make, using the violence to make a point. Um, obviously, one of the big questions is, is she really any better than the people who abused her at the end of the day? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely like a moral uh, conundrum for sure. Because, um, you know, she she's ultimately like a very complicated, um, definitely like very. Um, it, it's it's ultimately like a like a you know, definitely like a very messed up situation. Um, but, um, you know, I, th I think it all kind of stems from the conversation on, like, the objectification of, uh, women, mm -hmm. um, and the patriarchal kind of system, and, uh, uh, in this case, like, Japan, you know, um, kind of dissecting that and what that means, uh, for these characters and how they serve that kind of conversation, you know. I think it's a movie that really looks at gender. Uh, and the way that men and women perceive each other, uh, within this context, and I think that, you know, I I think that regardless, you know, I think the movie makes a really good case for the characters being who they are, with all that.
Specifically, I think it comments on not only gender, but relationships in Japan. Yeah. Um, but it does it in a way that it's obviously thinking of foreign mar- foreign viewers as well, who aren't, you know, in- ingrained with the Japanese culture, that they can still get something from this. Because I, I took away, obviously, you know, the the abuse cycle and the gender role roles but like the audition thing obviously i don't know for sure if that actually is something that has ever happened in japan but that 100 percent would not fly here well something i thought was is was interesting is like um because okay because the, the patriarchal element of it right like that's something that can kind of cross between like cultures i think pretty easily because of just the way that the world operates on that level which is you know in my opinion pretty unfortunate uh but we're in that place still um but um you know so i think on that level like it's able to be kind of speak to like a universal point uh for people to relate to and understand um which is uh which is you know very effective i i also think that Something interesting about the audition thing is that it's still like is relevant today, and I think like the way it, it there you know it can apply almost to like modern technology. Like I don't know if you had this, but I thought a lot about Tinder and like dating apps while watching this movie with the audition scene because <laughs> that's how Tinder works: is you swipe through these people. And, you know, you're being very superficial about who you're swiping on and who you're choosing, you know, within this, like, app. Um, And I think that what the movie says, that in relation to the way men perceive women and are very superficial about it and objectify them in the process and, you know, kind of demean them in their head, you know, I, I think is very interesting. I was not thinking about this specifically because I've never used one. However, as you were talking about it, I am going to disagree with what you said. That that wouldn't fly here in America. Because I think the most apt uh, comparison, especially at the time, would be those shitty reality shows like Blur or you know, whatever else is on where it's they're kind of doing the same thing. Just kind of picking who they like best based on shallow um traits personality types yeah and i i also think that like the premise of like oh like they're holding a fake movie audition that is like kind of outlandish for sure um Mm -hmm. but i i think that you know obviously the kind of outlandish nature of that practice you know serves for the i think the comedic tone of the film initially you know and then you kind of see the like consequences of that as the film goes on which is interesting and, you, and you're right though that there is an application for um that moment for like i guess <laughs> like uh stuff like what you were just saying with like the reality tv shows like the bachelor bachelor and stuff like that absolutely um i do want to give a special shout out to e sheena I probably butchered that pronunciation, but she plays Asami Yamazaki. Uh, She is both vulnerable and horrifying throughout this entire movie, and that could not have been easy to pull off. Yeah, she was wonderful uh, in this movie. I think that she added a lot of um, kind of depth to that character, and, um, you know, Mm -hmm. there there, there are uh, scenes, the scene where she is um, talking like because um kind of kind of an interesting thing is like there's like red flags with her like a lot of her contacts like don't really exist um (laughs) um and when he confronts her about it the way that she goes about it like you can tell that there's something going on but she also could you can tell that like there's something inherently kind of like off about the situation by just the way that she talks and all that like the rhythm of how she delivers her lines but she also does feel very vulnerable in that scene she's a very conflicted character i think and i think that uh that actress does a really good job um uh capturing that and understanding that 
Absolutely. Um, let's see. So the the only time that I question her character, other than I knew that something had throughout the whole movie, I knew something was off about this girl because I'd seen the only thing I knew about this movie was the cover, which is her standing there with the needle. Yeah. Which is kind of unfortunate that that's the cover for this movie. But the thing that made me question her, at least in this in the writing of her character, is after the first time they have sex, and she makes him pledge, you know, to love only him and only her, she leaves in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. I'm not. Do you buy that a person who is this obsessive, to the point that she goes to where she goes, would just disappear on him like that? Uh, um, I, I, I can, I think I can believe it because I think the idea is like, well, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Cause the whole thing with it is like, ah, uh, <laughs> I'm, 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 it's, 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 it's interesting that, that you bring that up. Cause I was, I was wondering about that too. Um, but I, I think the idea, the way I kind of interpreted it is that she's like kind of testing him, I think, you know, um, I think that's the idea. Um, I could be wrong though. Uh, Maybe I should just give it like another kind of watch or something. Um, but I do think that that, that was an interesting choice. Um, oh, for nothing else also, uh, to kind of, kind of mess this guy up. You know, and and they kind of drive him to like madness, you know. Yeah. Um, let's see that. And yeah. yeah, you might be onto something. It's very, it's very, it was very odd. The other, the only other thing in this movie that I, it's the only the scene in this movie that I would argue could be cut, is right when the sun pops up during the third act, we suddenly cut and it's a fake out to make you think this is all a dream. In my opinion, anyway, at least on the first watch, it really doesn't add anything to the film, and I almost think that you could have cut that entire sequence and shaved maybe t- ten minutes off this movie. Hmm. What do you think? I'm not sure, cause, well, cause um, there's a, I I think I think that there's a whole thing later with how um. They uh like like when she gets her neck uh broken um she kind of repeats something that they said she said um like uh on one of their dates you know um about her kind of like excitement with like seeing him again I I think that it's interesting to have that moment flashing back to um like wh- when they're in the hotel. Um, I think that there's something there with that, um, and kind of like remembering this like moment when they were like happy together, um, or 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 when like they're in the hotel, um, and then, um, although she's brandishing a can of mace, so I don't know. Yeah, actually, maybe I'm not sure how I feel about. <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, because I, I just thought it was a fake out. And I will admit it got me. Uh, yeah. I was ready to write this movie off. I was like, oh, they did a fake out. None of this actually happened. Yeah. Figures. Um, but it trips you out, yeah. But kudos on them for, for sticking with it. And it's the needle scene is, especially when she gets up to the eyes. I was oh, like, oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, that that really got me because I was like, oh my god, <laughs> I I have a like a fear of needles, uh-huh. um as well. So that scene definitely made me very uneasy, and uh definitely chilled me to the bone. Uh, well, was, they're smart disturbing. to to shift it to a first person perspective, so you don't know exactly where the needles are going in. You just can hear them. Oh yeah, yeah. I I think that her delivery of the of the line like deeper, um, is definitely very. I think the the juxtaposition between, um, her, like saying deeper, um, you know, in such a lighthearted like kind of like way, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely very like creepy. It was it was creepy, but at the same time, even though I could read the subtitle to my ears, it sounded like she was saying "kitty, kitty, kitty." So I oh, was also true, laughing. True. Oh well, yeah. I mean, I because because I saw the subtitles, I just kind of knew that uh, she was saying "deeper." Um, but you're you're right though. I I think it's just the fact that it sounded so light and so like she sounded like happy while doing it. The juxtaposition between that and what she was actually doing really disturbed me. Oh, for sure, it is it is very disturbing. Um, and it's smart to save that all for the third act. But I did de- I did kind of debate myself for the first two acts. Where we're still building stuff. If perhaps yeah. this movie is a little too long, two hours even. Mm. But I also don't know what you would cut, which is why I went to the to the dream sequence. Uh, but it does feel like I like a slow burn, but at, after a point, I think you stop stop being a slow burn going into we're stalling for time. What do you What do you think in this book? Yeah, see, I don't think that we ever really stall for time. I feel like everything is like fairly necessary uh for for what it's trying to achieve and and do i do think that there are some moments that um are probably like open to interpretation i think um i think that's for sure we're we're dealing with a very unusual filmmaker here (laughs) (laughs) so i i definitely have that perspective when i'm watching a film like this where i'm like okay this isn't the traditional way of things to go but Mm -hmm. you know but I, I, I do think it's interesting. Well, and I, I guess I should also throw out for not only you, but the audience listening, is that this is a very big blind spot for me. I am not well-versed in foreign films. Um, and a lot of that is, even if I'm watching subtitles and I know what they're saying, there's always this disconnect between what I'm reading and what I'm hearing. And yeah. it throws me off. So part of it may have, have been that... Um, and I may have a set, totally set different experience with it on a second viewing, but overall, I would say I did like this quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, uh, it's it's a great movie, and I I definitely recommend it to anyone looking to get into um, like Japanese horror movies uh, for sure. Maybe, yeah, maybe not as the first movie. Uh, I would if not you're recommend like... this first horror. Film. <laughs> No, as your first Japanese horror or as, film. Or even as your first Japanese horror film. Yeah, um, like, if you're, like, squeamish about, like, stuff, maybe uh, save mm-hmm. this for, like, later. Um, Like, probably, like, The Grudge, like, Juan, The Grudge is, like, a good one to start out with. And then, like, Ringu, um, you know, stuff like that. I'd agree more with that. Yeah. Well, Doolittle, I don't have much else to throw in about this movie. Um, we talked about, you know, its, it's themes and kind of just how brutal it is. Uh, yeah. All it, and it's all in like one, it's all in the third act. Uh, yeah. Well, that's what's impressive is that it does start out so subdued. But I think because of like that last bit, it kind of... Like if you if we were to go back and rewatch this movie, the oh you know the first part would probably be as violent and disturbed as the climax, mm-hmm. um because of just how uh j- just because of how much it it paints that like former part you know. I suppose we should talk about as well. I think it's during when he first starts hallucinating. There's a scene where he's having her give him a blowjob. And mm. then it turns into, I think it's his daughter. Or some, or what, his like housekeeper or something. Mm. Oh, I don't think I remember that. <laughs> um, oh, that's, that's, that's creepy. I, I don't think I remember that. Yeah, and then it ends up, I think, being like the person in the bag and he fights with the bag. Oh, 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 no, no, wait. I do remember this. Yeah. Oh, that is so messed up. Yeah. And, and, you know, obviously the guy in the bag, like, 
um, you know, his feet's cut off, like mm-hmm. that whole thing, which is just horrifying. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. Yeah, I do remember that. That is that is uh, supremely jacked up. And the, the guy in the bag is obviously very much foreshadowing of what she wants to do to our protagonist. Uh, yeah. And almost gets away with. Mm-hmm. Well, when it shows, it, when it shows that like this isn't the first time she's done this too, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and they kind of set that up because I believe the person in the bag is supposed to be the per the like owner of the bar she worked at. They mentioned earlier in the film. Yeah, I think. Um, yes, yes, that's true. And they could only find like the pieces that were left of them. Yes. Very good foreshadowing. Very good. They did a very tightly written script. Well, Doolittle, any final thoughts or opinions on this wonderful little film? Um, it's really good. It's uh, notable for being um on Tarantino's list of his favorite movies. Uh, he's watched uh since um he started directing. Uh, which is interesting, a uh, bit of a tidbit. That's how a lot of people found out about this movie, actually, is because Tarantino put this movie on that list. That's how a lot of people found out about a lot, a lot of movies that Tarantino, like, a lot of, like, foreign films he put on that list. Like, people were like, oh, yeah, I'm going to give that a watch. Uh, like, Battle Royale, I think, was on his list as well. That doesn't surprise me in the slightest. Yeah. Uh, interestingly enough, I guess we should also mention, I believe... This came out like the same when his first film came out, or something to do with that. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, um, uh, audition came out. Yeah. Well, because oh, no, sorry, was early. It's it was included in his list of top twenty films since nineteen ninety two, the same year he started directing. That's what yeah. Was. That was that was the list I was referring to. Yeah. Yeah, I've just forgot that it was since nineteen ninety two. Well. Yeah. Uh, for our arbitrary score of the evening, I'm going to give it a three and a half. It's quite good. Uh, just be warned that it is a slow burn for the first two thirds of the film. But stick with it, and you will be properly horrified. Yep. And I'll give it a um, I'll give it a three point five as well. Um, it's it's a movie I really like, and it's in my top one hundred films of all time. But um yeah it's it's a very good movie not one well, not one i go back to a whole lot i sorry i did not mean to cut you off no yeah i i mean i want to watch this again at some point but it'll probably be a while yeah it's understandable it's it's a lot <laughs> well uh do little that is our first february review down uh, next week, it's going to be my turn to show you a film. I think I'm going to show you Return of the Living Dead 3. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. I'm curious to see what you will think about that movie, because it's fucking nuts from what I remember. <laughs> All but, right. uh, we'll, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching, and Doolittle, as always, thanks for hanging out. And yeah, we'll of course, man. See you guys next week. Yep, see you guys later. Bye-bye.